Our entrance and fitting. All that you have done to us, O Lord, you have done with true judgment. For we have sinned against you and not obeyed your commandments. But give glory to your name and deal with us according to the bounty of your mercy. As we gather around the table of the Lord, we pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries.
I confess to Almighty God and to you and brothers and sisters that I have greatly sinned in, in my, my thoughts and in my words, words in, in what, what I have done and what I have failed to do, to my thought, to my thought, to, to my most grievous thought. Therefore I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and, and you, my brothers, brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord, Lord our God. God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O oh God, who manifests your mighty power above all by pardoning and showing mercy, bestow, we pray, your grace abundantly upon us, and make those hastening to attain your promises as to the treasures of heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Job. One day, the sons of God came to attend on the Lord, and among them was Satan. So the Lord said to Satan, where have you been? Round the earth, he answered, roaming about. So the Lord asked him, Did you notice my servant Job? There is no one like him on the earth, a sound and honest man who fears God and shuns evil. Yes, Satan said. But Job is not God-fearing for nothing, is he? Have you not put a wall around him and his house and all his domain? You have blessed all he undertakes, and his flocks throng the countryside. But stretch out your hand and lay a finger on his possessions. I warrant you, he will curse you to your face. Very well, the Lord said to Satan. All he has is in your power but keep your hands off his person. So Satan left the presence of the Lord. On the day when Job's sons and daughters were at their meal and drinking wine at their eldest brother's house, a messenger came to Job. Your oxen, he said, were at the plow with the donkeys grazing at their side when the Sabaeans swept down on them and carried them off. Your servants, they put to the sword. I alone escaped to tell you. He had not finished speaking when another messenger arrived. The fire of God, he said, has fallen from the heavens and burnt up all your sheep and your shepherds too. I alone escaped to tell you. He had not finished speaking when another messenger arrived. The Chaldeans, he said, three bands of them have raided your camels and made off with them. Your servants, they put to the sword. I alone escaped to tell you. He had not finished speaking when another messenger arrived. Your sons and daughters, he said, were at their meals drinking and drinking wine at their eldest brother's house when suddenly from the wilderness a gale sprang up and it battered all four corners of the house, which fell in on the young people. They are dead. I alone escaped to tell you. Job rose and tore his gown and shaved his head. Then falling to the ground, he worshipped and said, Naked, 
I came from my mother's womb. Naked, I shall return. The Lord gave. The Lord has taken back. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In all his misfortune, Job committed no sin, nor offered any insult to God. The word of the Lord. As be to God. Let our response to the word of God be: Turn your ear to me, O Lord. Hear my words. Lord, hear a cause that is just. Pay heed to my cry. Turn your ear to my prayer. No deceit is on my lips. Turn your ear to me, O Lord. Hear my words. From you may my judgment come forth. Your eyes discern the truth. You search my heart. You visit me by night. You test me. And you find me in me no wrong. Turn your ear to me, O Lord. Hear my words. I am here, and I call. You will hear me, O God. Turn your ear to me. Hear my words. Display your great love. You, whose right hand saves your friends from those who rebel against them. Turn your ear to me, O Lord. Hear my words. Please rise for the gospel acclamation. Alleluia, alleluia! Alleluia! The Son of Man came to serve, and to give His life as a ransom for many. Alleluia! The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. An argument started between the disciples about which of them was the greatest. Jesus knew what thoughts were going through their minds. And he took a little child and set him by his side, and then said to them, Anyone who welcomes this little child in my name welcomes me. And anyone who welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. For the least among you all, there is the one who is great. John spoke up. Master, he said, we saw a man casting out devils in your name. And because he is not with us, we try to stop him. But Jesus said to him, you must not stop him. Anyone who is not against you is for you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, this week we turn to the book of Job. And in our first reading, we see how Job was afflicted by Satan because Satan tried every way to make Job to abandon God. Actually, Job represents all those who serve the Lord faithfully and yet endure suffering in their life. Despite his great misfortunes, Job still praises God, still loves God, still be faithful to God. And he also refuses 
to do or say anything against God, anything wrong. We also are called to praise God in the midst of our troubles because all of us had to face the difficulty in this world, in this life. And in today's gospel, immediately after Jesus spoke to his disciples regarding his coming passion and death on the cross, they started to argue among themselves which one of them was the greatest. They were wondering who would be in charge when Jesus was no longer with them. Each of them desired to be the leader over others. They were full of their own worldly ambitions and desire for power. Jesus read their hearts and knew all that took place among his disciples. For there he took a little child and said, Anymore, anyone who welcomes this little child in my name welcomes me. And anyone who welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. For the least among you all, there is the one who is great. Who is the greatest for Jesus? Not Peter, not John, not James, not Judas, not Simon, not Jude. None of his disciples who desire for power. Instead, a simple and powerless child who represents what greatness means for Jesus. For all those who desire to follow Jesus closely, the key to greatness or the key to be great is to be simple, to be honest, and to be humble as a little child. Unfortunately, there are many people who undervalue the power of simplicity. Yet, this is the part we need to take when we truly desire to follow Jesus. That is why St. Augustine said, Do you wish to rise? Begin by descending. You plant a tower that will pierce the clouds. Lay first the foundation of humility. So my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, to be great in the sight of God, we need to have the virtues of humility, simplicity, and honesty as the foundation of our lives. Because only when we have these virtues, we could be the least and we could be able to love and serve others in our daily life.
Blessed are few, love God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer of you, through the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the breath of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are few, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the why we offer of you, through the vine and worth of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant us, O merciful God, that this our offering may find acceptance with you and that true is the wellspring of all blessing may be laid open before us through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For although you had no need of our praise, yet our thanksgiving is exalt your guilt, since our praises add nothing to your greatness, but profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. And so, in the company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Made holy, therefore, these gifts we pray. By sending on your spirit upon thine, let the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and gave him thanks brought it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more gave him thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and William, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may marry to be co as to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and found by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Our communion antiphon. Remember your word to your servant, O Lord, 
by which you have given me hope. This is my comfort when I am brought low. Let us pray. May this heavenly mystery, O Lord, restore us in mind and body, that we may be co heirs in glory with Christ, to whose suffering we are united whenever we proclaim his death, who lives and reigns 
forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.